Hello, my name is Charlie Evans, and I am a software developer for the Call for Code team at IBM. Today, I want to discuss identity and access management, or IAM, in IBM Cloud. IAM enables you to securely authenticate users for platform services and control access to resources consistently across IBM Cloud. A set of IBM Cloud services is enabled to use IBM Cloud IAM for access control and are organized into resource groups within your account so you can give users access quickly to more than one resource at a time. Each of these services is labeled as IAM enabled in the catalog. You can use IAM access policies to assign users, service IDs, and trusted profiles access to resources within your account. And you can group users, service IDs, and trusted profiles into an access group to easily give all members of the group the same level of access. IBM Cloud IAM has several features for your identity and access management needs, including user management, fine-grained access control, API keys for user authentication, multi-factor authentication, and more. Let's take a look at how we can use some of these features in the IBM Cloud interface. So when you log into IBM Cloud here, to access IAM, you'll go to Manage, and then Access IAM is here. And when you get here, you will see this dashboard that has a bunch of details on it. So the first place that I want to direct you is to roles. So by default, IBM Cloud comes with a bunch of predefined roles for various services and account management for your account. So you can see here that um, for the account, we have viewer, administrator, operator, and editor. And then if we go look at a particular service, like maybe Cloudant, you can see that there are some even more predefined roles here. So these are great options out of the box if you want to be able to quickly assign roles to groups or to users. You can also create custom roles here by clicking the Create button, and you can give it a name, a unique identifier, a description, and then you can pick the service that you want um, to use here. So maybe as an example, we can create one called Clown at Read Only. We'll select Cloudant. And when you do that, you can see here that there's a list of actions that you can make use of. Um, you can look for, at it for any role, or you could pick a predefined role to see what um, actions are available to it. And you can come in here and you can pick the, the roles you would like to assign, or the um, actions you would like to assign to that role. And then after you select all those, you can review it here on the right, and then you can click Create, and you have a new role. We're not going to do that right now. So that is how you create roles, pretty straightforward. Most of the time, you will probably use the predefined roles because they're, uh, they're already pretty good. So the next thing that we want to look at are access groups. Now, as mentioned earlier, <clears throat> access groups are a way to assign users and service IDs to the account and give them those items all the same access to however the group is configured. So by default, when you have your account, there's this group here called public access that is the, just, again, the default um, group that is given. But you can create groups here. To create a group, you simply click the Create button, give it a name and a description. I have one here that I've created called admin that we're going to uh, do some things with. So after you create your group, you can go into it and you can view the details. And you'll see here there's a few tabs at the top. So the first one is users. This is where we can assign users to this group. Um, the users have to already be on the account in order to give them this access, but I'll show you how to add users in a minute. The same with uh, service IDs and trusted profiles. Um, the access tab is where we will assign the level of access um, to this group. So this is something that we're going to want to do here. So let's go ahead and do this. So you can see here that we're going to create a policy for this group. And because this is an admin group, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it basically access to everything. However, you can do this even all the way down to a particular service. So like earlier we looked at Cloudant, I could come in here and I could pick Cloudant and then we would go from there. But for now, we'll just do everything. You'll click next. Here you can assign specific resources. So um, if you only want to um, give this 
um, this uh, group access to certain resources, you can you can do that here. Maybe it's in a specific region, region, or if you already have a resource group defined for those services, you can pick the resource group. Again, this is an admin account or an admin um, group, so I'm just going to give it access to everything. We'll click next. Here it, you can give it you know one of the roles. We're going to pick administrator. And you can see here that it tells you what actions that will be granted to this group. And you can see all the different policies. And say next. And then uh, we'll do the same down here the ser for service access. And for platform access, we're going to give it everything. When you're finished, you can review everything. You can look at the JSON output if you would like. And then you can say add. And then it will add this information over here on the right, and you can continue adding more services, etc., to this. But since I've given it everything already, I'm just going to say assign. So we'll sign it. We got our success message here, and we can see that I have my access now, which is great. So the next thing that you'll probably want to do is add users. So we'll do that here on the users tab. And right now I have just the one user, so we'll create, we'll invite a user here. So you will typically do this by email address. We'll just use something like test at gmail.com. And then you have a couple of options here on how you want to assign access to these users. You can do it by access group, which is the preferred way. Um, again, because you can, um, you can give them access to a bunch of resources at one time. Or if you want that fine grained access control, you can select access policy here and you can create a, a new policy for those specific items. So here, we'll just stick to access groups. I will pick admin, and I will click add. Now over here on the right, you can see that we have a summary, and it says we've got one user and one access group is assigned to it. And you can see which groups were assigned. And then you would click the invite button, and they would get an email. They would uh, finish creating their account and when they uh, log in to this IBM Cloud account they would have access to whatever was provided to them here in this list and you can always manage that and change it later. So like for example if I look at my account here I can come in here and see what access I have I can assign groups to it and then uh, for Cloud Foundry you can you can do Cloud Foundry things here. So the last piece of information I want to show here is API keys. So if you do a lot of things with the IBM Cloud uh, command line interface, you can log in with your username and password there, or you can do it with an API key. So I'm going to create an API key, and then we're just going to look at a quick example of how you can make use of that. So I'm just going to call it a test key. Now after it creates, you have a few minutes to make a copy of it or you know download it when you download it it downloads in a JSON file um, in this case I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to go over to my command line tool which is PowerShell in this case and the the way you log in with an API key is you say IBM cloud login you do dash dash API key and then you paste in the API key so you can see here I'm now authenticated and now I can run commands. So maybe for example, I want to look at resource groups. And you can see here that it has my account that I'm logged in as, and it says, let's look at all the resource groups. I just have the one called default. Um, you know, you can do other things. You can say IBM cloud account orgs, for example. And it says, I'm going to look at all the organizations. I don't have any created here, but again, these are authenticated commands, and I was able to use the API key to do that. And when you're done, you say IBM Cloud Logout, and it will log you out. And that's it. So in summary, we had a quick look at how identity and access management works in IBM Cloud. We looked at the roles page and explored the default options, as well as looked at how to create custom roles for services. Next, we looked at access groups and created a new group to assign users to. Then, we looked at how to create a new user to add to our account and assign them to that access group. Finally, we looked at creating an API key with our account and ran a couple of commands from the command line showing how to use that API key. 
If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or one of my colleagues on the, in the Call for Code Slack, and we'd be happy to help. Thank you.